if any is paying if anyone is paying attention if anyone is listening now who was Shimon Hakalpus okay we mentioned him here uh here sorry actually mentioned him way back here Rav and Sadik Shimon Hakalpus okay he was the one who organized the Evangelion Evangelionut if you like or which they call Pavlut okay so who was Shimon Hakalpus? Shimon Hakalpus, also known as Hakam Eliyahu, was one of three Simons, Shimon Kephas, Shimon Kalpus, and Shimon Kippa, who were instrumental in forming Pavlut. Of all of them, Kalpus is probably the most historical. In Judaic tradition, he was the first halakhic patriarch of the so-called Jerusalem church, or the Eda Yerushalmit. Uh, but that is because we do not recognize his predecessor, Jacob, as one person, unless it refers to Yaakov of Kefar Sechania or Jacob from Kafar Sama. Who knows? Some people say that these were the disciples of the other Yeshus. Some people say that these are the disciples of this correct Yeshu, Jesus of Nazareth. So it's difficult to tell. But um, Jacob doesn't refer to one person uh, in, in Judaism. It's a, it's a group of people. Maybe it refers to the disciples that we've just named here, Yaakov and Yaakov, or maybe it refers to the official Jewish authorities. Jacob, as opposed to Esau, okay? So um, there was Jacob is one thing, and that's the one they called James in the Christian church. Um, but after him, the, the real person, the historical person we know was um, Calpus. And Calpus is said to have been a relative to the Pantera family described in Judaism and also described by Epiphanius, by the way. So he was somehow related to the family. All right. Was Simon Kippa a Roman bishop? We've got three Simons, one of them is called Kippa. Is it the same as, uh, as, as, as a Simon in the Roman church? And uh, for one reason or another, the Mahzor Vitri on page 282 on the Mahdura Mak uh, Makitze uh, Nirdamim specifically warns anyone um, who is associating Shimon Peter Hamor, who wrote some liturgy for Yom Kippur and other occasions in a cell, with, quote, the abomination of Rome, unquote. But confusing him with Shimon Kephas, who died in Rome, is nevertheless very common among Jews. So there is something called the abomination of Rome, which is no, light, no doubt it's a doctrine, Romanism. And anybody who associates Shimon Peter Hamor with the abomination of Rome, um, there's a warning against them. They shouldn't do that in Judaism. So you have to distinguish these um, founders of uh, Pavlut or uh, evangelism oh, from, you have to distinguish them from, I mean, we're talking about Jewish evangelism, the ancient evangelism, you have to distinguish them from Romanism. So there's, they can't be polluted by Romanism at all. And if you do uh, mix them with Romanism, the abomination of Rome, then there's a, there's a warning against you for confusing them in that way in Judaism. This is the Jewish tradition. Now, interestingly, the, interestingly, there is a Jewish folk tale about a Jewish Pope called Andreas, who's possibly the anti-Pope uh, Anaclitus II, who lived in the same tradition that these three Simons worked on. So um, there, there may be uh, at least one quote unquote Pope, at least an anti-Pope who is associated with this tradition, but otherwise we shouldn't associate uh, this tradition with the abomination of Rome. Obviously as an anti-Pope, Anaclitus was probably also opposed to the abomination of Rome, but uh, didn't get very far. All right then, so let's move on. So what is that tradition? What the tradition, the tradition which should not be associated with the abomination of Rome. What is this tradition? The same tradition of the, the three Simons. What is that tradition? The Telia interprets Devarim, that's Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 21, by saying that the part where it says, they made me jealous by atheism and angered me with their airiness, unquote, refers to the Notsrim. And the part, I will make them envious by foreigners, I will make them angry by an unlettered nation, refers to the Ishmaelim, which means the Hasidei Omat HaOlam, who were established through the messianic form of Judaism for Gentiles, which the Nazrim called Pavlut, which we can also call evangelism. Okay, so this tradition comes from this, this idea in Deuteronomy to make the Nazrim jealous by Ishmaelim, by making Ishmaelim. Ishmaelim stands for Hasidei Omat HaOlam. Okay, that's the followers, disciples from the nations of the world. Now you might think, oh, I thought Ishmaelism got something to do with Islam, and I'll explain shortly. Okay, but first, you're going to ask, Jesus wasn't only for Israel's lost sheep. Jesus did come only for the Nazrim, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He says so himself. Israel's 
mirror twin, the lost sheep of Israel are Israel's mirror twin, Jews who are circumcised on the eighth day, but who forsake their birthright and put their faith in the sword, not in the Lord. They're also described as having more than one wife, which is um, a dispute in Judaism. So there's something uh, there about them. But it also is interesting because uh, it distinguishes them again from Christians who never never had uh, uh, that, that practice. Okay, so these Nazrin, this lost sheep of Israel, the, the mirror twin of Israel, um, who abandoned their birthright and put their faith in the sword, not in the Lord. This is Esau, this is Edom. And so Jesus came for Esau, Edom. That's who he came for. He came for the lost sheep. He didn't come for the rest of Israel. He didn't come for Jacob. He came for Esau. The, sa the sages who studied Pavlut tell, Pavlut tell us that his Torah for Edom, his, his instruction, his... Uh, um, yeah, his instruction for Edom, his way to reach Edom, to try and bring them back, was specifically to winnow, to sort out, to winnow the wheat from the chaff, the wheat to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and taken into the barn, and the chaff to be cast into the fire. So Edom equals Notsrim. So Edom, or the Notsrim, were to be detached from Israel and turned into Edomian Ishmaelites. Hence, Torah Edom, is foreshadowed in Genesis chapter 36, verses 2 to 3. We well, probably should have a look at that. So I'll open it up. So here's Genesis chapter 36 to try and help you understand even more deeply what it is we're talking about. Specifically, verses 2 to 3 is what we're interested in. This is the account of Esau, that is Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Ada, daughter of Elon, the Hittite, and Oholibamah, a daughter of Anna, the granddaughter of Zibion, the Hivite. If you remember the story, his parents were not happy about these girls. They were noisy. So he went and married another wife, and he married Basmat, the daughter of Ishmael, who was the sister of Nebiot. And Ada bore Eliphaz to Esau, and Basmat gave birth to Reuel. And that's all that's interesting for us. Reuel means friend of God. So from the apostate Esau, Esau, Edom, who went astray and uh, mixed with the Canaanites, an Ishmaelite brought forth from Edom, from Esau, a friend of God, Reuel. Reuel was brought out of Esau by Ishmael, by Ishmael, an Ishmaelite actually, Ishmael's daughter, Basimad. So, so that's what we're talking about when we're when we're saying things like this. Okay.